She's a world famous author, literary ambassador, Newbury Award winner, Library of Congress living legend, and a Vermonter. That is quite a resume. <laughs> Kat Villanzoni sat down with Barry author Catherine Patterson to hear her story. It's very important for us to realize what a beautiful language we have and to use it fully. Author Catherine Patterson lives in Barrie, but her name is known worldwide. Earning, among other distinctions, Newbery medals for her works like Bridge to Terabithia and Jacob I Have Loved, her professional writing career spans some 47 years and 30-some works. But it began somewhat less encouragingly. Pat, pat, pat. There is the rat. Where is the cat? Pat, pat, pat. It was published in the Shanghai American School newspaper. We live in China at the time. And beside it was a letter from the teacher that said the second grader's work is not up to our usual standards this week. So uh, my first published work was published alongside my first critical review. Patterson started writing seriously after her first son was born. Bridge to Terabithia earned her her first major award, something she says comes with a mixed reaction. Uh, it's wonderful to get a claim, but it's also a little scary because you think, oh, they thought I could write that book, but I'll never write that book again. I have to start all over again with a new book. Catherine and her husband, John, moved to Vermont 25 years ago. She says living in the state has influenced her writing, and she wrote books with ties to the state to learn more about her new home. When I, when I was trying to learn how to write, people would say, write what you know, and I thought, then I'd never write. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'd write to find out. But her latest work, which she co-authored with her husband, isn't set in Vermont. In fact, it's set in a magical world far removed from our own. The Flint Heart follows a boy, Charles, and his attempt to rid the land of Dartmoor of the Flint Heart, a talisman that gives the wearer absolute power at the price of compassion. The book's imagery and language paints a vivid picture while leaving enough space for the imagination to fill in the details. If you don't have rich language, you can't think richly. And I think what's going to happen to our wired-in kids is they're not going to be able to think well because they don't have the language for it. She hopes her work and others will inspire people of all ages to pick up a book and use their imaginations. Kat Villianzoni, Channel 3 News, Barry. And we will have more from the Pattersons in our Books Over Breakfast segment Wednesday morning. Tune in then. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely.